Yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to put on my crash. Right before uh, prom night here, so we can kind of get an idea of what happens in an actual crash scene. When somebody gets distracted or they're driving impaired, we're going to try to make sure they know that uh, driving's a very important thing to take seriously. And I'm Andy Knippen on the committee also. Try to get everybody involved here, trying to record this so that future generations can watch it and drivers have classes. Oh, anybody, so we can hopefully learn from it, see the seriousness of it, and see the times of how long it really takes to respond to an accident, and that time that it takes, you know, you have that hour for the accident to get into the hospital so they can really see over half hour away. When you have everything that happens to get everybody there, how critical that all is. Great. Thanks a lot, you guys. Josh Warnicke, Fort Hanks Fire Chief, uh, putting on this mock accident today uh, to remind kids of you know, impaired driving and uh, distracted driving does kill. Um, uh, we're hoping to remind the kids uh, about one that bad decision could cause. How many people do you think are part of this? Uh, on our side or the kid student side? Well, both, if you know those numbers. Uh, on our side, we got a uh, Putnam County Sheriff's Department, the State Highway Patrol coming, uh, Office of Public Safety. Uh, we got Life Flight coming in, uh, Kaleida Heavy Rescue. That'll be, all of them, that'll be here. So, down here right now, it's you're getting ready uh, with makeup and stuff? Yeah, uh, St. Rita's is coming in. They're going to they're gonna doctor all the kids up with makeup. Um, and uh, get them all ready to go for the, for the crash scene. And that'll be at the school? Yeah. yeah. About what time will that Fort big... Jennings School, we're going to start around uh, 9.30. Uh, we're going to start inside at 9.30. Uh, we're going to move outside, you know, after the presentation. And then the scene, the scene will start from there. We'll remove the tarps. Uh, the scene will start. And then uh, we'll just do our thing like we do every time. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. And what part are you playing in this? You're going to get arrested. Okay. And what about some of you guys? I have my feet stuck under the dash. Ah, jaws of life and all that. What else is going to happen down there? I got some glass in my head. What's that? I got some glass in my head. Okay. What about this guy? I'm on hard. You're what? I'm on hard. I'm a train driver. Okay. And you gals, you must be the prom queens, right? <laughs> You're going to be dead? No way. I just freak out. Okay. Probably be in a real accident, be a lot of them, right? Thank you guys. Appreciate it. All right. Okay. Well, no, I'll take a listen. I guess you can go from there. All right, man. To the Cleveland trip, right? Or the rain, maybe. Yeah, I actually. Uh, Justin asked him if he liked that shirt. I can see why he did. This will actually cover this shirt. That'll be fun later. Who's got the Yeah, that's the first time I've Oh, no, it's Christopher. 
Right? <laughs> 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 it smelled good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 serious event guys uh, first of all I'd like to thank our fire department and the surrounding departments and all the other law officials because they're taking a, a lot of time of their own to, to demonstrate what they do and what they have to deal with when bad decisions are made so at this time I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Osting and Mr. Lowdy and we'll get things started because they're on a time schedule okay so we'll just follow them okay well thanks for having us over here and like he said this is a pretty serious matter so Every year, we run out on accident scenes that we don't want to be on, right? So uh, we developed this based on our concerns for you guys. Um, many of you may have been in an accident before, maybe many of you have not. Hopefully this gives you a better understanding of the impact and actually what actually happens during an accident, okay? So most of you read or see in the news about people your age getting in car accidents, right? Drinking and driving, texting is a big thing, right? It wasn't all that long ago we had that crash on the lighter road that took two or three lives, right? And they were all in high school. So uh, some live, but some live with disability. You can't walk, you can't talk, uh, some even die, right? So what we're doing um, here is going to be a real life scenario. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of different responding units. It's going to be timed out just about like it would in a real type accident, right? So. We live how far away from the hospital? 30 minutes, right? So, what we're going to talk about then also is there's something called the medical golden hour. Strategically and statistically, you have a higher chance of dying within that hour than you do the next six hours afterwards. So, if you don't get the right medical care in that first one hour time window, the chance of dying goes up a lot. And you think about a car accident where you're trapped right? We're coming from home, we're coming from work, wherever we're at, we have to get to the station, we have to get to the accident scene. Cloverdale's 20 for 15 minutes, right, for us to get there. The accident happens, you have to wait for us to get there, you have to wait for us to cut you out, and then we have to get you to the hospital in less than an hour, right? All very, very hard things to do, so uh, that golden hour is literally the time that we call, you know, life or death, right? I don't want you dying in the back of my ambulance. We don't want you dying in the car. We want to get you to the hospital. So, that being said, I'm going to let this over to Denny here. And... Good morning, everyone. I'm Dennis Osting with the Fort Jennings Fire Department. Before we start the demonstration, everyone take a few seconds and think about someone you personally know that had been in a serious injury accident or killed in a car crash. Just think about that for a little bit, okay? I'm sure that each of us could think of at least one person. Unfortunately, some of us can think of more than one. The purpose of this demonstration is to try to prevent each one of you from becoming one of those people. Stop and think before you get behind the wheel, before you pick up your phone to do a text. Just think what you could do or what could happen. We ask that you watch closely and think seriously about this. And take it seriously. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we would do this around prom season, just because hey, it's a good time, everybody's going to be out. It's going to be out late. Think about that before you pick your phone up, answer a text message. If you have a couple beers, think about that before you get behind the car wheel, right? It's not that just you guys are the ones that are going to get injured in your car accident. You think about everybody else that's on the road. You know, I have a couple kids. If I'm in the car and I'm heading home and some distracted driver hits me, you know what I'm saying? 
it's going to affect the lives of not just you, but everybody that uh, you impact with that car accident. Let alone your family, too. So. So the scenes in front of you, we see pretty frequently, unfortunately. So Brandon here has been hit by Carson. He's currently calling 911. If you've never called 911 before, they ask a lot of questions. Don't hang up. They need to know where you're at. Most important, right? Um, they're asking how many victims they have, how many EMS they need to send, whether or not you're going to need life flight, the jaws of life. So this is what we hear in the middle of the night. It wakes you up pretty easy. This is Fort Jennings Fire Department. Collider Fire Department, Audible EMS. You have an injury accident. One Musketeer Drive, Fort Jennings. A mock injury accident. We're seeing a mock accident. Multiple injuries to Fort Jennings High School. One Musketeer Drive, Sheriff's Office, of 940. So I'll give you a little background on everybody as we're waiting on everybody to show up. So Carson, 17-year-old junior, drank about six, 12 ounce beers within about 90 minutes. He was answering the text from... So he was a restrained, intoxicated driver. He was traveling at a high rate of speed. He looked down to find a text message on somebody he was heading to uh, for the party. Lost control of the vehicle, ran off the road, overcorrected, causing him to run into Brendan's or Brandon's car on the passenger side. Because Carson's seatbelt and airbag is injury minor and non life threatening. Logan, 17 year old junior, restrained front seat passenger, radiator fluid, radiator fluid splashed into his passenger compartment, causing significant second and third degree burns. In addition to other injuries, his injuries are severe, need immediate care that's not available locally. He's going to need to be flighted out through a burn center. Hannah's an 18-year-old senior, unrestrained backseat passenger. She's been drinking also, but upon the impact, she wasn't wearing a seatbelt. She was ejected out the side window, hence she was laying on the floor or the ground when you've seen her. She has moderate injuries. She does have a broken arm. She's in shock and has an impaired understanding of what's happened. Noah, 17 year old junior, unrestrained backseat passenger in Carson's car, thrown around the backseat, struck his head on the side window, shattering it out. Coupled with his head injury, severe internal injuries, he's bleeding. And the bleeding will take his life as he is on his way to the hospital. Brandon, 18 year old junior, he's in the second car. 
He screamed right on his way home from prom to have me what he did. So the first on scene, you're going to see cops. Our sheriff, they have us to So Grant and his day, they were sitting at a stop sign when person's car swerved in front of them, striking them right there on that passenger side door. Unfortunately for Erica, she was in that passenger seat. She was also unrestrained. So she was unrestrained, which tossed her outside of the car onto the hood of Carson's car. She's not breathing, she does not have a pulse, and her injuries are fatal. She will die on this scene. Help has arrived. While they are busy, let me explain what will take place. Fire EMS, step it up. We have critical injuries. We'll, we'll explain what's going to take place. In the first tenth of a second, the hood of Carson's car is going to As it strikes Brandon's car. It's undoubted occupants continue to move the car. Welcome County Service 46 and route. Causing severe. Boy, you think you're crazy, huh? You have a critical injury. Critical injury, high victim. Severe internal injuries. Since the back seat passenger is restrained, they are thrown around inside and outside the vehicle. In the second, the side of Green's car is crumbled and begins to intrude the passenger compartment where Eric says settings. The airbag deploys. Eric is still forward. towards the side window. It shattered the shards of gra uh, glass cut into her face. The force of the impact fractures her arm and causes severe bruising. She is ejected. cervical spine, causing it to dislocate. He is pinned and unconscious. Erica is ejected through the side window and came to rest on top of the hood of Carson's car. She is now unable to move. Erica is unconscious and is not breathing. Brandon is stunned and confused and is able to get out of the car. Logan is pinned, Logan is pinned under the dashboard of the car, causing both of his fingers to break. The radiator fluid from Carson's car splashed through, causing significant burns to his body. Okay, as you see in this response, you're going to get cops. Obviously, we're the first ones here with the close. Unfortunately, we don't have all the equipment that we need to actually meet somebody. Therefore, we have the lightest and the most important problems with that. Audible ZMS is on scene. We're going to start. So, what you see is the fire department beginning medical care on the victims. Of course, the ones that are walking around are able to do so. You see over here with Carson, the state highway patrol has noticed that he does have alcohol on his breath. 
So you think about that golden hour we're talking about, right? We're uh, we're 20 minutes into this already. Does it feel like 20 minutes went by? <coughs> we have a 30 minute drive, right? So when we have a severe, severe injury, we call life flight. Life flight comes, they can be from here to St. Rita's in seven minutes. So as I said, you heard the pager go off. You may be a basketball game, you may be at work. So as you see the draw is always getting fired up here. This is this is where everything is noisy, this fire and all this right here. So as we start adding
the Wall Street. Carson is awake, alert, and cooperative. He has some mild bruising on his left shoulder from the seatbelt, and his face is red from the airbag deployment. There are no other injuries seen by the EMS. His speech is slurred, and he is staggering slightly. Law enforcement will conduct a sobriety test to place Carson under arrest after the EMS clears him. He will be charged with numerous offenses, including DUI, distracted driving, and vehicular homicide. Law enforcement will call his parents from the Putnam County Jail. See how the, the personnel and fire department are moving around and working on the other side of the car now. Now they're pulling Logan out of the vehicle. At certain times, the EMS will make the decision whether they wait on my flight or they go to the control. It depends on the injuries. And that, that's just a judgment call at the scene. See now they got Logan out of the car. The stabilizing his head. Stabilizing his head, neck. Okay, so we'll have life fight in about nine minutes. So often when you have a victim that needs flighted to a hospital, but they're nine minutes away, we get them out and we usually put them in the back of the ambulance and we'll start all the IVs, medications, anything that we can do to help save his life before life flight is See, we're getting people extricated, getting into the back of the ambulance. So no, uh, So you see we've got everybody that's alive in the vehicle, in the ambulance. One sitting over here by the cop car being detained. Erica's laying there. There's nothing we can do. She will lay there until love funeral homes come and get you. So life flight back here, they don't just land wherever we want them to. They have very strict reasons why they can't land in certain places. Power lines, tower we have out here, these little light poles, all those things are obstacles. obstacles that will cause them to crash. So what we do is we set up a safe landing zone with lights. Occasionally we'll have codes. You see the four corners? Just like a light flight landing pad would be at a hospital. The light sitting in the middle on the other end shows them the wind direction. So when they're flying above, they see those lights, they know which way the wind's blowing, they know where it's safe to land. And then our firemen will actually get a hold of life flight via these little radios and let them know about it. So they'll tell them that we're behind the school, we have light posts here. And we always keep a charged fire light just in case something does. I need mean, the tan stabs, life level have an issue, the fire is pretty rare. And we gotta be prepared for that. So the victim that's going into life light will stay in the back of the vehicle until they work on him. 
The other victims will be transported to the hospital in the other ambulances. So Noah, if we sustain a severe increase in last year, he's still in the line. He was heading back and had some chest injuries. The breathing tube has been placed in his airway and to see IV lines have been put into his veins. His heart rate is 125. You're normally running around 70. 125 is high. Blood pressure is 78 over 40. Normally 125 is We can fill it to life light before they get here. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So back to Noah. He's not breathing on his own. We're doing that for him. His blood pressure is low. His heart rate's high. He's in severe shock. He's bleeding internally. And he has burns in
So as you see, Erica getting loaded up into the hearse. Unfortunately for her mother, she did show up on scene and seen what happened to her daughter before she got loaded up for her last drive to the funeral home. Does you see a life flight starting to approach the scene? So Logan is still in So Logan is still in the back seat of the ambulance here on the cot. The EMTs are working on him back there trying to keep him alive until life flight is That's life flight communicating with us, letting us know where they're going to come from, what they're planning on doing, and how they plan on getting here. So you see the patient coming back from the ambulance. We're going to come over here somewhat in the middle, kind of where we're at, and they're going to wait. They're going to wait until the squad. Based on his injuries, they're going to determine the best place for his care. Like we talked about, will be a burn center. Patients with this many injuries will typically go to St. Vincent's in Toledo. how many people it takes to get life right here.
That's some important words right there by Josh. So when he secures the scene, that means all victims are taken care of, whether that is life flight heading to the hospital, EMS heading to the hospital, in the back of a cop car, or in a hearse on the way to the field. as we look and reflect back on what we just seen. So, does anybody have any questions about what just happened? As far as the first experience, hopefully this is your last. So, just bring it all in. Look how many vehicles showed up for this. How many fire trucks it took, how many cops it took, how many people it took. You got response vehicles that came from all, all the way from Ottawa to get here. Right? You think about the time that people spent getting to the fire station. How many people left their house, left their birthday parties for their loved ones and came up to do this. This is how it works all the time, so. We do want to thank everybody that did show up. I see Fort Jennings Fire Department, the Public County Sheriff Office, love funeral home. Kind of County EMS, Clyde the Fire Department for bringing over their draws and cutting this car into many pieces. Audeville EMS, the State Highway Patrol, County Line for the vehicle, State uh, St. Rita's for life flight. Uh, Dan Word for let me come over here today. Future Gen Solutions and Progenics Bank for donating money to get these cars. So, this isn't really meant to scare you, it's meant to open your eyes a little bit. I mean, like you said, most people have never seen a car accident before. Most people will never be in this situation. Hopefully you won't be in this situation ever. So, when it comes up to prom time, when it comes up to any time during the summer... We just want you to be aware of what happens when you make decisions that impact other people's lives. So, fire and EMS, I can speak for most guys here that have been on accident scenes before. We see a lot of things we don't want to see. We see a lot of things that we can't unsee. Been on EMS since 2006, so you can imagine the car accidents we've seen in between that, here and now, right? And I can speak for Daddy here the same. It's never fun walking up onto an accident scene knowing whose vehicle it is before you get there. And it happens. We see family members all the time. We see friends. That's things you guys that will never forget each one. And no matter how long it's been, you still think about it. Yeah, you can suppress those memories, but they're always there. So, think about what you're doing. Thanks for paying attention. Student body, as Mr. Lally said, this isn't necessarily to scare you, it's just it's a little bit of ghost in reality. But please join me uh, because all these firefighters here, almost all of them, all these paramedics are volunteers. The volunteers in our county, the volunteers in our community. Uh, we've had some people from Dolphin City come over uh, out of their own time just to demonstrate this. But more importantly, they are there for us when we need them. So please join me in giving them all a round of applause as a thank you from us to them. If you can hear me, thank you guys, gals, for coming out and help us experience this. Uh, once again, please be safe. Uh, I know personally, I don't want to see any of you in an accident or, or go through a bad time, even though uh, you may not believe that, that is the truth. So be safe, be better, have a great prom weekend, have a great end of our school year, especially you seniors, um, and we're going to be better.